before we do any work with fractions, I want to think about what they actually represent. And one way to think about fractions is that they represent how many parts there are of some whole, of some large collection, of some big picture. So here's a fraction, 5 over 11. A lot of times people will call this 5 elevenths. So think about that for a second. It's saying you have 5 elevenths, 5 pieces, each of which are 1 eleventh. That's a way to think about it. Um, again, it represents 5 out of 11 total pieces that you have. Okay, this uh, top part here, we call this the numerator. So the top of a fraction is called the numerator. Bottom part, called the denominator. Now, before we work with this a little bit more, I want to actually get more of a visual way of thinking about this. I mean, when you first learn about addition and subtraction, you know, you give them, you're given pictures of apples and all this kind of stuff. So I want to look at a picture and try to understand what these fractions actually mean in a real life situation. All right, so real life situation, we have this amazing cake right here. Let's say that I wanted to divide this cake into four pieces. Now these would be four huge pieces, but let's say I'm really hungry and that's what I'm going to do. So now what I have, instead of one whole cake, I can think of it as four pieces. Those are two equivalent things. They're exactly the same. Think about what that means numerically. If I eat one of these pieces, then I've eaten one-fourth of the cake. So think about it before we had five elevenths. So you had five out of eleven. So that means I cut the cake into eleven pieces and I ate five of them. But if I eat one piece out of the four, then one-fourth of the cake is gone and three-fourths of the cake is left. Now if I eat two out of the four pieces, I've eaten two-fourths of the cake. Now think about that for a second. Take a look at the picture. That's actually the same as one half of the cake, isn't it? If I had just cut it in half and eaten half of it, that will come up later on when we're dealing with fractions. So no matter how I cut this up, if I cut it up into eight pieces and I ate one, I would eat one-eighth of the cake etc. It's always going to work that way. So it's part out of whole. Now what's kind of weird when you think about this is that you can actually have fractions where the numerator is bigger than the denominator. So how does that work for our definition? We'll take a look at this fraction right here, 7 out of 6. So it's saying 7 sixth. Well if we had a total of 7 pieces out of six, that way of thinking about it doesn't really work. But imagine if I was able to cut something up into six pieces and then I had an extra piece. That makes a little more sense. That's what this is. This is actually more than one. So anytime I have the numerator larger than the denominator, I have what we call an improper fraction. So 11 over two. Now you may have seen before where you write this as a mixed number. Typically in math, people don't do that once you get out of uh, arithmetic. So in algebra, we would just leave it 11 over 2. In calculus, we would just leave it 11 over 2. Anytime the numerator is larger than the denominator, we're going to have what we call an improper fraction. Now how would this look on our picture of the cake? Well, remember, I originally cut my cake into four pieces. So if I had an extra fourth, I would have five fourths of cake now. A little bit unrealistic in a way because why do you have this you know one giant cake and then an extra piece but that is what it represents so I have five fourths now instead of just four fourths like I had when I had just one cake so again these all have real life meaning to them and as we learn how to add subtract multiply and divide these fractions I'm going to come back to these pictures and show you what we're actually doing with the physical representation for fractions